We're going to get straight to the point. I have no idea how to build an airplane, but I'm going to try to. So I believe I have all the electronics already in my apartment just scattered around in some box. I'll have to go find it. But I want everything to work with my drone remote, which I believe uh, is possible. I have a, um, a module that I can plug in into the back. It's not this one, it's a different one, that uh, has easy hookup for the three pin servos and you should be able to map it to the different channels of the um, joysticks or the switches. And you might be asking yourself, what's the body gonna be made out of? 3D printing. I know I'm gonna regret this, but yes, I'm going to try to attempt to model the plane to fit all the electronics nicely and we'll see if it works probably not but we do have some contenders for our uh, plastic of choice I've done a little prep for this one because I've kind of already had the idea in my head and I bought a few plastics that I think would be that might work but we'll see so what we're gonna do is first test you know the, the strength of the plastic see how it all works together I have four in mind. So first up we have PLA, which is known for being very easy to print, but very brittle. We have this Ultra Impact White V2 PLA, which I've printed it a few times and uh, it has potential. Our third plastic is PETG. This plastic is easy to print like PLA, but has the strength of ABS or they say so so our fourth plastic and the one I've always wanted to try is carbon fiber PETG so we'll have to test to see how good that is so I'm not sponsored by atomic filament but I really like their plastic so let's get into it and be a material engineer <laughs> printed out each of the plastics and I decided to go with a five I think I did five inch five or six inch by one inch by half an inch and I ended up the reason you see two out here is because I ended up doing one horizontal and one vertical just to see if there's any uh, strength change for how I need to print certain parts uh, this should give us a good test because I ended up doing what I'm planning on with the plane is uh, I think my shell is three layers and then an infill density of 10%. So let's get on and test it. But we are out in nature because when, not if, but when the plane crashes, it is going to break. So I thought it would only be fitting to test the different plastics out here with what's going to break it a stick all right so i found the perfect little spot that we can put our test prints that we made on here we go uh yeah i don't i don't think the stick's gonna work i brought it back up They all broke. We're gonna go with the carbon fiber plastic because that one, it sounds the coolest. We're gonna do a quick test using this uh, receiver and we're gonna hook it up to the controller and it should be able to turn the servo. And the nice thing about it is Servo has this uh, three pin connector that is perfect for the receiver. So just plug in. And then we're using the uh, power supply set to five volts. And let's plug this in. 
So I have already bound the receiver to the transmitter, so that should already be set up. We should hope. All right. So don't know what channel it's mapped to. No. One second. Oh, I had the servo plugged in backwards. No. Oh, there it goes. It's this channel, up and down. Which is perfect. I think that's what we would want to go up and down. Look, it's waving at you. Oh. I'm just glad we got this working. So, now it's time to I guess model off the rest of the plane. Man, I've been at this for hours and I cannot figure out the last part. Oh, wise one, guide me. What do I need to do to get better? You must get good. So all the 3D modeling for the plane is done, and I'd say it it looks pretty good. Uh, this is where the motor is going to be mounted. Uh, this hole is for the wires in the motor. And then we have the servo up here, which is going to hold the FPV camera in there. So how I end up doing the wings is... The wing itself will fit inside of here and then they'll be able to screw down four holes and this hole right here, I don't know if you can see it that good, but that is where the servo that will be controlling the wings, that will be controlling this flap, uh, the wires will go in through there. So for the tail, I ended up modeling it so it fits in here and then you screw down two screw holes on the top and bottom to hold that in. And then I put a servo in the back to turn the back fin left and right. And then I added this like little landing gear that will screw in from the, the top and bottom. So if we look at the body... So I have the top where it fits in the inside so you'll be able to screw in from the outside to hold it in place. I have a spot for a switch to turn the battery on or off. And then just some holes for these holes right here are for the antennas of the receiver. And that's about it. Um, the wings, I will say the wings themselves are going to be sketchy. This part right in here is very prone to breaking. Uh, it's really not the strongest. So we'll see how that does. So it was a disaster. I mean, nothing went wrong. Nothing went right, and I kind of knew that going into it. If you see right here, um, this was supposed to be the back tail, but I misjudged the 
size of everything and nothing fit like it should so this could not go back here because i had to destroy that servo mount to fix the battery use the wrong prop i guess the only thing that worked correctly was the the switch it at least turned it on and off that's gonna wrap it up for now because I need to make some major modifications and it's probably going to take a whole week to reprint everything. That's going to be a separate video with a uh, updated plane that will hopefully fly. So get out there, build, learn, and have fun. And until next time.